Jonathan, is that is that the theme song? I love it. Hello. Oh, oh we're live. We're awesome. Oh. This is the theme song. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, I love it. Maybe unseen hidden entities working in the background. Closely associated with three letter agencies such as J to T, E S D, and A D. There we go, now we're a part of it. What's up, everybody? You can hear us. This is the intro screen. Welcome to the intro screen. Please take your seat. audio is definitely loud because I just heard it. <laughs> Maybe mine isn't. Okay. Oh, there it is. There we are. I hear us in the background. <laughs> Hello, everyone. In the background, we're having a little bit of chaos as we get our live stream set in today. We just got the DeLorean parked around the street. Unfortunately, I needed a permit, so I'm going to have to move it in about 15 minutes. Um, yeah. It's okay. We'll cover for you. Wait, no, with the DeLorean, you can just go back in time. <laughs> uh, so I don't have enough space. I have to get, as you know, you have to get up to 88 miles per hour, and there's, it, there's not enough room on the street. There's You're a right. stack out on the end, so you didn't have to smash into it. Uh, they didn't accommodate for California traffic. Totally. Time traveler problems. All right, well, I think enough people have gathered now. Let's jump into the trailer, and then we'll get to it. Ladies and gentlemen across planet Earth, what's up? And welcome to Morning Coffee. What's up, guys? <laughs> I am Kate Buckley. Some of you may know me as uh, from my Twitter or my YouTube channel, The Kate Awakening. Thanks, Mom. Where's everybody at? Where are you at, family? It, yep. it was it, it was at that point I knew like I was like this feels good. I know we're like doing yeah, something right same. here. Same. Yeah. I greet you in the love and the light of the infinite creator. This is Baseline. I'm your host, Xavier Hawk. It was pumping. I knew when the masses woke up, they were going to want to ride that wave and there's going to be a big push. Before that, though, I'm just going to burn a little bit of Palo Santo. Just get everybody settled in. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jonathan White. I'm here to help you master your sexual energy so you can manifest your ideal life. See, you can't be afraid of anything in life, you guys. You gotta just get over your fear, especially if you're afraid of doing something. That's all the more reason why you should hit it and go for it. Pedal to the metal, because fear is just a frequency you don't wanna live in. You wear your blues like a new pair of shoes and keep the secrets in your heart locked up in a tomb. I got the tool to make your mind, body, and spirit move, but I pursued all I can and now the rest is up to you. Hello, hello. I see you all here. This would be considered in a way a blackout if the hours did roll by and there was no data all of a sudden, but it was just all black. That's what we call a blackout. Hey, hey, happy Saturday, everybody. Welcome to the Cosmic Download. My name is Jace. Getting the gang back together. The tribe is gathering.
All right, here we are. We're live. It's working. Thank the one creator. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, Matthew Mornian, our good friend and uh, speaker at the Family of Light Gathering. Uh, Matthew is joining us here tonight to just kind of hang out, talk about himself, talk about all the crazy, weird stuff going on in the world, uh, what he's going to be talking about and bringing to the Family of Light Gathering, and whatever questions that you guys have along the way. So, welcome everyone in the chat. Thanks for being here. How are you doing, Matthew? Really, really good. It has been an amazing day. I mean this very sincerely. Um, not to get weird from the start, but it's my first day off in, I think, like almost two months, literally the first oh day gosh. off in two months. Um, I was blessed to have a, uh, a really amazing past life regression and honestly what was kind of like a higher self interfacing uh, healing session that I had today that honestly it, it was it, it felt like it was going to be a random thing but it was literally brought by spirit it like reset me in an incredible way so anyway do wow really good. and you were on the you were hosting that or you were on the receptive side of that oh I was on the receiving end of it nice. we have and you know maybe we're already jumping in too far but we have a whole group of people that we're training right now um to do this work that I'm doing and yeah. we're starting to see incredible uh results from it so I got to be on the receiving end of some of that for once but, awesome so, yeah Really sweet, cool. sweet. So well, that was somebody from your your school. Oh yes, absolutely. She well, here's the thing. She already has a pre-existing modality, and many of the people that are working with us are already working in a number of like capacities within the energetic realm. And so we're getting people from kind of all levels. But huh. um, so as many of us are going to see in the coming months, probably a lot of people that are going to this event yeah. is that there are is a whole new group of people activating into just energy and energetic abilities and so. Anyway, that's a long-winded answer, but yeah, one of our... That's of awesome. Our I'm glad that that went so well today and that you had a lovely rest somewhat before we introduced you, I guess, reintroduced you to some people, even though you've been on my channel a couple times and on Jace's channel and we've seen you a bunch of times. We still want people to know who you are and why we picked you to go on first to introduce yourself and like have be part of the party because we desperately wanted to continue partying with you and your of course your beautiful partner too who we're excited to see and i know you've both been working on the school and i've been hearing great things about it too so i just wanted to give you that shout out and oh, um, yeah thank you she's here in the background somewhere she's around <laughs> yeah. Yay. hey hey <laughs> so just to give a quick um bio background on matthew before we jump into things um, Matthew Mornian is a professional psychic reader and intuitive healer specializing in the release and removal of negative energetic manifestation from the body. Things like entity attachments, astral parasites, implantation, and many other strange phenomena that are completely misunderstood in our modern day world. Mm -hmm. His current mission is to assist with healing the human body and our collective consciousness through the activation of expanding multidimensional intuitive healing abilities that exist within each of us which that last part I think is so important and like a, you know, the main part of why you're doing this work is to activate this in other people, right? Absolutely, 100%. Nice. So yeah, we've gone, we've, um, we've known each other. We actually all met at the same, like in the physical, the three of us all met at the same event, Conscious Life Expo 2018. It's when I met Alexis for the first time. You guys had already met before but that's when I met both of you guys. And I don't know how much you remember about that, but that was a really trippy experience. <laughs> that, it, was, it was the first time we all got to see kind of the strange underbelly of disclosure kind of social dynamics. We got to kind of peer around this wild, you know, conference and just kind of view all the, all the weird, I mean, oh man, so much. But yeah, that was, that was sort of the beginning, 2018 which for a lot of us seems like it's like multiple lifetimes ago, right? <laughs> Literal multiple lifetimes. And anyway, not to get weird, but Alexis, I love how you're dematerializing on the screen constantly. It's a, a, I think that's one of your multidimensional abilities showing up by location. 100%. That's true. We have to stay touching, otherwise we phase out of this reality and just start <laughs> drifting away. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm trying to stay present, but I'm, you know, I'm very busy on the other planes, as you know, so. So she'll, be, do what she'll I be in and out throughout the interview. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what, 
Let's see. I'm trying to think. There's honestly so much we could talk about. It's, yeah. I, I know, right. I we have, and, and and for all the people watching at home, we had a whole talk. We had like a sort of pre-plan. They were like, we're going to talk about this, and then we're going to do this. And then it's like, I love how as soon as any time we start this, and you're like, yeah, so anyway, hmm, how's life? Right? Yeah, <laughs> tangent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe to for the for because I know there's a lot of new people that are tuning into this that were impressed with what we shared about you and they weren't familiar with you before. So, of course, I already read your your bio, but to kind of give people maybe a more personal, in-depth understanding of, let's start with, um, well, we can start with wherever you want, but maybe multidimensional tarot and how, what, what exactly multidimensional tarot is compared to normal tarot and how you started getting into this field and how it's evolved, because I know we've We've watched you expand and grow so much in your own healing abilities since we've known you over the past couple of years, and um, it's just been so cool to see. So, yeah, how yeah. would how would you no, explain no, thank that? You. That's a that's a that's a very good question. Um, I guess I would start out by saying multidimensional tarot. I think is one of many tools for divination that are representing themselves on the earth plane at this stage of our journey here and whatever, especially if you're one of the people that's watching this channel right now, you're going to be on some level aware with the, you know, just tarot as a tool for divination. Now, um, what you're going to find is, you know, this has been something that has been established for, you know, thousands of years. Many of us understand, uh, for those of us who follow the law of one, understand that, you know, tarot seems to have originated on third density Venus and a whole other timeline. And so anyway, all that stuff aside, um, there are many schools of tarot, many flavors, and one of the things that kind of first occurred in my intuitive journey was that um, I got kind of activated into it. I, I was never really taught tarot. I never ever took a single tarot class. This sort of weird switch flicked inside my body in 2015 and kind of wow. 2017 as well. And I started to just come in contact with it. I, I was introduced to a woman at that stage who was a bit of a teacher, and she even told me, you're going to start remembering this stuff. And so what happened for me is, especially with tarot, I started to create a personal relationship with the images and the archetypes. I started to find myself as characters um, and, you know, probably all the people we know. And what 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 happened for me was that I realized that there was these multi-layered elements of information presenting itself that kind of spanned outside of what we would call, you know, traditional readings, which are, you know, people in the old school, you know, looking at like, when am I going to get married? How many children am I, am I going to have? Am I going to have this job? You know what I mean? The third density things. And what we find is that there's an entirely different layer of information. So multidimensional tarot is really allowing us to look at the layers of the energy body, our chakras, our meridians, um, our organs. And what we find is that there is a pre-existing framework within tarot that allows people with a few shifts and a couple changes in focus and understanding to start to look at it in a whole new way. And so th that's a really long-winded way of saying it's it's a really amazing spiritual tool right now. Um, and um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Totally. So to explain in maybe in layman's terms, do you perhaps have a multi-dimensional or almost like a body counterpart for every tarot of the traditional tarot deck like if i pulled actually yeah the two That's of pentacles do you do you have that list i feel like we've talked about this absolutely I, yeah. um here, here here's the thing it, it's it's always a little weird because there's like 78 of them so there's right. a lot of like visual memory recall and what i've found is that in each scenario within you know tarot depending on how you want to look into it there's going to be indicators that are going to tell you what's going on within the energy body. Um, even if you don't know anything about the energy body and you're one of the people on the screen that's just not hearing of it, we can also refer to it from the level of our emotional states. And so um, I guess it's kind of a really long winded way of saying that there's a whole other layer of information available with uh, tarot right now. And I kind of already meandered off of the essence of your question. <laughs> but um, Okay, I have I have one now. I've got one. Another one of your expertise that is in your bio, which is also something that I think I enjoy talking to you about. And whenever we're hanging out, this is the chat we tend to have, which is talking about specific entities and sort of astral experiences that are happening, especially when we gather in groups, the subtleties of the tele tele telepathy and of the is shifting and exchanging of frequencies that, like you said, they aren't the mundane questions like, hi, how was your family? Where do you work? It's like, 
<laughs> very, very different communication styles and also having fun looking and also pruning and helping each other prune away things because you have a different perspective. So for in specific to potentially releasing or helping someone release or remove a negative energy manifestation, for example, or an entity removal potentially, that concept always I really enjoy and I've been meditating a ton about. So I just wanted to ask you about your work with that and how that's been developing. Yeah, thank you. Um, I guess energy clearing and, you know, we could say multidimensional tarot as well, make up probably the bulk of what I do on an everyday basis. And when we talk about entities or kind of implantation, it's an incredibly dense kind of uh, just, it's an incredibly dense world right now within the kind of new age, you know, social scene in which there's so many meanings, there's so many understandings, there's so many terms that are constantly thrown around. And so. For me, I've sort of begun to simplify it and whittle it down into basic concepts. And what I've begun to understand over the last few years is that most of what we talk about with implantation, entity attachment as well, although there are numerous astral entities and parasites that exist in our world, but nine times out of 10, we're dealing with blocked emotion in the body. And so the bulk of what I do is helping people open up blocked energies within the body. And where would those energies be? For most of us right now, it's in the meridian system, um, which is widely used in traditional Chinese medicine, many other places of the world other than the United States or just in Western medicine. Um, it's 20, actually, I think right now there's about 25 channels. Um, there's also universal uh, meridians, but a lot of the non-physical energy within the human body right now is working within the meridian system, within the chakra system. And so the bulk of what I do is really opening up those channels within the body, which honestly is something that the client does and that the people that we work with actually do on their own. We really just kind of coach them through the process, which I think is an important thing to say for everyone out there, because there's a lot of people on the earth plane right now that are doing similar things and they're working with energy and everyone's coming to this in our own way. Right. Um, and if you're one of the people that's watching this, and this is an important moment for you guys to receive this, it is because you are able to do this as well. Um, and so basically what I'm doing lately is helping people figure out how to open up those channels in the body. One of the things we find um, upon opening up non-physical energy centers, and when I say opening up, what we really mean is clearing out density, clearing out negative emotions. In certain cases, it will be an astral entity or a parasite, but we find that upon opening up non-physical energy centers in the body, people become more psychic. It's like an automatic thing. People's consciousness changes. Things about yourself that you thought, you know, it's just that's just how I am. That's just, you know, like the way things are. Things will begin to shift with our personas, our bodies. And anyway, I will continue to go on and on about it. I might it's not like, answer your question, but go ahead. It's like kind of like almost like changing the oil of your body, getting out the dirt that's and the grime. Energy. And it, it's yeah. connected to the, the nerve, the central nervous system too, right? And like the amount Absolutely. of like light and I don't know if it's actually gamma energy, but um, higher density like uh, particles and waves that are allowed to work through our meridian system when we don't have all that dense junk, um, whether it's from like our diets or emotions or anything, and it's like clearing that out, right? Oh, absolutely. And it sounds cheesy to say it. It's sort of an oversimplification for everybody at this point. But the human body is fundamentally changing from a carbon-based life form into a crystalline-based life form. And so along with that, there's a process of, there's just incredible chemical change taking place in the body right now, which case in point, why people are gathering to things like this, to, you know, to moments like this, to events like this, people are starting to tune in to a non-physical frequency of consciousness. And what happens is you're able to receive that frequency of consciousness as you go through the process of clearing the energy body, um, which, which right now we are taught in Western medicine within the world in this sort of mind virus game that we're all watching and playing along with that that is not a factor. In fact, we are taught right now to completely give our control and our consciousness away to others rather than, you know, reclaim it once again. And so anyway, I'll stop there before I start ranting. Again. No, no, please okay, keep going. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm yeah. ready. So we're doing really good. Thank you for explaining those intense concepts because I know that they can get wordy sometimes because they're almost like a new uh, offering like it's like built onto something even better and you you've delivered that to so many people and we've appreciated all of your hard work and there's 46 people here apparently watching us so I just wanted to break and say quickly that 
We are making this particular segment together to introduce you to one of our speakers, Matthew Mornian, and what he does, as well as inform you that we're having a flash sale right now of the tickets for the three-day pass that's going to be the July 23rd, 24th, and 25th. If you would like to join us, there is a reduced price right now. We just wanted to let you know that and offer that to you. And it's for um, pretty much until the end, until tomorrow morning at like 8 a.m. I'm going to quit it and we're going to keep rolling. So just wanted to let you know with that. And I just wanted to ask now the next question, which is what has been your most rewarding experience through offering this service to others, through offering your gifts to the family of, of light, I, we could say. Yeah, what has been the most rewarding I mean, it's a, it's a very good question. Is it getting invited to parties like ours? Because I hope that's up there on the list. Actually, honestly, that is a really huge part of it. And I, <laughs> I, I mean this very, very sincerely. I, I'm very, really, truly honored that you guys would even ask me to be a part of this. Um, right. I, I mean that very, very truly. So it is actually a really, really... Um, it really means a lot to me. A lot of I, I am one of those people who has made a decision within our sort of social interactive scene, within this, you know, whatever the, the sort of group that we're a part of. I made a decision a long time ago that I would rather be real than famous. And so it has it has been a very difficult road for me. And what I've found is that, and this is where, you know, really the rewards for me show up, is that I have found that by embodying the most truest, weirdest, bizarrest version of myself, that it is attracted this caliber of people into our group and into especially the training program that we're doing right now that is shocking it is shocking it is one of those wow. things lately i i kind of mentioned it at you know the start of this where we're we are reaching the stage of our training program right now where people are starting to build websites they have modalities they have abilities they're practicing with other people they're doing sessions in the background working with others figuring out what's going on we have people that we're working with right now that for you know years prior they had been victims of unseen entities all sorts of manifestations wow. and it was a huge leap of faith for me to start this training program and as we did we got to watch people transform and now we're reaching the state where we're like okay, let's see how you're doing what's happening with your program and you know i'm getting healings from these people and i'm like what like it's blowing my mind and so i think for me the greatest rewards have come in watching this sort of lights turn on inside people and go we are not helpless beings here we have the power to heal ourselves and when we do i mean people's abilities just their consciousness shoots it absolutely explodes anyway i feel like i'm getting hyper verbal oh that's great it's good. I want to hear the emotional side of it too because it is an emotional thing and we want to do our best and like help people and we do channels and we put ourselves out there and we may, then you build classes and you have to you feel like you have to do more and build more and create more and share more and activate more and like the more you do the more responsibility I feel like does arrive for you to continue helping humanity and I just I wanted to design this event in a way is also to be like a small vacation and like the best case scenario for the people that we wanted to invite for this and just breathe and reconvene and not stress ourselves out and enjoy and play a little bit in a safe place that's a beautiful place and I was just we just wanted to see if we were able and capable of making something like that because the world isn't always that way and navigating as like a business person or in any way trying to offer a service with this particular <laughs> like niche is so weird sometimes and difficult to even get the verbiage out that people will be like yeah I need I need to invest in this and then all of a sudden people do and people are coming out of everywhere and all these new responsibilities and connections and you feel I feel like I have to keep going with it I feel like I have to keep evolving with it which is what the event what is to me personally is like an evolution of all this other hard work of like messaging people all day about this stuff that you're also working with people. I don't, I haven't done it to the degree you have and worked nearly as hard as you think because I definitely have had more days off in the last little while than you have. First day off in two weeks. You need, you need more breaks than that, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two, two months. Two months. two months. Two months. No, for real. I knew it was my own fault. It was my own Actually, you know what, you, you said a very important keyword, which, you know, maybe this is me kind of twisting it onto another direction, but 
people need to evolve right now. And what I have noticed, especially about you guys, is that the creation of this event represents one of the most natural evolutionary things that I have seen in so long, especially as evidenced by the by the uh, trailer that you guys did, which I absolutely loved. And, um, I, and so here, here's the thing. I do not have access to the live chat. We're going to make it really weird, everybody, in YouTube Live. How many people are watching? There are 39, 39 right now. Okay. If you, if you okay, pull cool. up the okay. live chat on your phone or something, if you're not using that, you I can will look at actually, that. I, I, was, I was trying to do it in the background. But okay, so there's 39 people watching right now. Um, out of the 39 people that are watching, there are going to be at least, I'm going to say, between five, probably between five, seven, maybe even ten of you guys that are going to be able to receive this frequency. And so right now what we're doing is working with a, just a frequency of telepathy <laughs> within the energy body. And one of the literal portals in your body to send and receive messages is your left eye. It I'm so glad you brought that up. I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> and so the reason why we're getting really weird here is because there is a whole group of people online that are going to be able to receive this frequency and they're going to buy a live stream ticket and they're going to receive this download that makes it, it's going to help you guys understand why energy is leading you to things like the family of light gathering. Right. So I know this is weird for some of you guys, but it is a fact. And so you can tune into the left eye, especially for those of you guys that want to receive an internalized experiential slideshow of emotional information. So right. the left eye is key. I'll pause there. So why, why is the left eye, what does the left eye represent and why is it that kind of portal? What, it, what How is it related to the meridian system in that way? That is a very good question. And here is the thing. There's a whole bunch of kind of, you know, cultural and old world spiritual understandings um, throughout, you know, Egyptology and a number of, you know, old cultures. Here's the thing, I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about the left eye portal. And so I had an experience and I think this was 2019 now, um, in which, you know, some energy activated within my left eye. I began to sort of, uh, this sounds really weird. We're gonna get really weird guys. Let's I had this weird. sort of light open up in my left eye in the end of summer of 2019 that I never told anyone about. It was like this litter. I thought I was going blind for a while. And so I freaked out about it. And I was like, I didn't say anything. And um, what it was, was a literal opening that appeared in my field of vision. It was there 24 hours a day and it grew, it got larger and I got really scared about it. And after a few months, I noticed that it was an opening. And I noticed that when I tuned into it, my physical body would shake or vibrate, the eye itself would move. And I started to realize that in the context or the course of my readings and energy work sessions, um, it would there was just a different level of energy that would come in. Huh. And so I began to experiment with people where I would talk to them in sessions and I would direct them to the actual eye. And what I noticed was that um, it, people begin to receive energy on a different level. And so in my own journeys, what I figured out was that many of us are from what I think some people call the school of the left eye. It's got many, many different names, but huh. in previous ages, such as Atlantis, which is also, I think technically not even really what it was called at that stage, but within what we would know as an Atlantean era, pre-Egypt, I guess we could say, um, there was a number of just openings and just things that we would do within the eyes to transfer energy. Um, and so it's really just an old skill coming back. But um, anyway, I feel like I'm going on a strange rant with that. I'll pause there. So oh, well, I have another question about that. If something I wonder often when it comes to, um, you know, the, the toning in the ears and the relationship to the meridians of the body and the polarization of the, um, you know, typically we, well, in the brain, we say it you know, left is masculine, at least in, in the mainstream, they say the left brain is masculine, the right brain is the creative feminine, right? Um, but most people generally consider the body to be opposite of that, where the left hand and the left side of the body is the feminine, and the right side is the masculine. So in that case, the brain hemispheres would be switched. Where do the eyes play into that? Do the eyes, is the left eye part of the, that feminine or masculine energy? Well. I don't know that I would differentiate between feminine and masculine energy when it comes to, I guess we could say, energetic function of the eyes. I can tell you that along the left side of the head, and this is pretty well documented. These centers in the brain aren't necessarily seated on the left side of the head, but on the left side of the human brain, 
are a couple key just connection points. One of them is known, I think, within academia as like Wernix region. Another one is called Broca's region. And just it's theorized that these these areas on the left side of the brain, both in the front and the back, have a lot to do with controlling human consciousness. And most importantly, words, vocal speech, how we translate, how we uh, authorize forward movement in the body. Um, and I probably have that a bit off. It's been a while since I read about it, but I believe that it has a relationship with the left eye because there, there's actually an access point in what we would call the outer canthus of the eye that will allow you to kind of insert something up and reach sides of the brain there. I don't know exactly how it happens within things like cloning or other forms of technology, but I, I, I think that there are both organic and non-organic versions of it. And so. Um, I guess that's kind of a bizarre way of giving an example of kind of one of the things we're going to be talking about at Family of Light Gathering, which is etheric machinery or etheric devices and how there are a number of non-physical kind of um, devices and technologies that we're interacting with much more heavily now as we go into 2021 and 2022, but they are designed um, or they're, they're actually working with energy centers that are emitting from the sides of the body. And so one of the things I think we're going to discover in the coming years is that the eyes play a big role in that. So, uh, nice. yeah, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really glad you brought up uh, cloning in relation to that because that was something else I was going to ask you about and get your opinion on. And so that's that's a good segue. Like, So, you know, you, we we're talking about the left eye in positive context and the natural context of, like, we can pick up on each other's uh, you know, telepathic communications and, and have a deeper connection through the left eye. But on the technological cloning aspect of things, how does that play into, you know, how, you know, the, the you know, just to be blunt about it, the reality of, of human clones out there and how they're programming these clones mm -hmm. and, you know, how the, say, memories and other types of things are being implanted or programmed. How does that relate to the eye? And that is such a good question. That is honestly, that is a that is a that is a really good question. Every time I, I, I have you on my channel, you're like, "Yeah, let's do <laughs> clones." <laughs> oh, were we, was that one of the prohibited topics? No, it's no. just funny. It was actually on my list of things. To, oh, it's on the list. To Don't specifically worry. cover. <laughs> oh no, I love it. For those of you guys watching at home, all three of you, um, every time I see Jace, we literally get weird about cloning, and you know, there's always a string back and forth. Anyway, um, honestly, you guys, I am a firm abs. Well, I know I've I, I, I've seen the physical human clones in the flesh. You were there with me at Conscious Life Expo, whatever year that was. Um, I don't know if I pointed it out to you there, but there was a woman that had been there many times and absolutely positive was just a created, just kind of like a program life form. Oh. Um, and so there, there, there's a number of them. I think that we're going to receive disclosure about cloning. And I know this is going to be a fun one for everybody that was jumping about the UAP report, but we're going to receive horrible disclosure about human cloning before you guys get to hear, you know, creepy Joe tell you about the, you know, like the UFOs in the basement of the White House. Like you're never, it's not... <laughs> It's not going to happen, but what they are going to tell you about is the cloning projects, um, and it's going to come out pretty soon. It's already out. It's you know in the collective like, consciousness, but um, it is a fact. It is real. Um, they're both you know there's program life forms. What we're also going to discover, I think, is that there's many different versions of cloning. They've also been spelled out in you know popular media as well. Right. But um, one of the more common ones, I think, is conscious overriding or consciousness overriding. And what we've already discovered right. is that the human brain is really not the actual seat of your consciousness. It's really just a receiver. And so what we find is that it can be flashed very much like a USB drive. You know, you can just flash other you know, energy into it. You can create a partition layer within the human brain. So I think in the next coming years, we're going to be learning about just this partial cloning technology, which is really just an overwrite of your consciousness, um, which is the really fun thing about it. As I've been going through this process of like remote viewing layers of the human energy body, it does seem as though there is a literal device inside many physical, physical device inside many politicians at this point which is always a fun one for everybody in the chat to kind of go wild with or anybody later on who raises our collective hackles, but it is literally real. Um, so I think it's giving anyway. people relief, like cognitive relief to know these things and to have these conversations too, because it's creepy and people are 
getting it. They're like, this person's not real. They're making it obvious. They're making a display of it, it seems like to me. And they're making all the memes against blah, blah, blah. And they're allowing these, these, these rumors to spread recently. But a few years ago, it was like, no, no, we can't spread this rumor now. It's not time for this rumor. We've got to do this rumor instead. And it, it's been annoying to like, be an honest person with an online platform trying to talk about these things in the organic time we want to and then having to dance around this topic and then watch this charade in front of all of us just being like wow like yeah <laughs> i guess finally but also kind of like f you guys but I, that's how i feel sometimes but the narrative that i'm seeing that they're starting to push in the um oh come back come back there we go uh, <laughs> in the mainstream more <laughs> is this um like chimera Oh, yeah. um, human hybrid disclosure and I saw it uh, most prominently in this new Netflix show called Sweet Tooth um, mm -hmm. where they are covering um, human hybrid programs I mean like literally genetic genetically modified created chimera clones and then they even ran this advertisement in the, the I think it was the Guardian newspaper like a physical printed newspaper um, in some big city in the US and it, the headline was like, scientists discover um, human clone hybrids or something like that. And they made it look very real. Like they had pictures of like a deer human hybrid, an owl, a wolf. And so maybe we're gonna start to see the kind of cloning disclosure, but on that side of things, because if they come out and they say, oh, we can create- Genetic experiments. Yeah, experimentations of humans. It kind of somewhat includes the cloning programs as well without having to directly acknowledge it in a way <laughs> I, totally I think there there's already a bunch of people walking around well this is this yeah. is always such a fanciful statement there's already a bunch of people walking around who have received a number of injections and uh just medical technology that is actually bringing some of that dna into the body um they're going to be introducing it later on and en enhancing people's senses um i think i think one of the rounds or, or just what i had discovered when i was looking into kind of like the hybrid testing programs is that um it's going to be used to enhance the five senses more so than create physical change mm. um and there's already there, there there was even like a smell gene um, that they're able to inject into people that will dramatically increase your sense of smell. I think there's one for eyesight. And so I think one of the ways that's going to be rolled out before they kind of start disclosing more of the hybrid cloning things is that they're going to talk about, well, we've now tested these genes made up of, you know, other animals and also somehow mixed with human genes. And if we give you this new therapy, you're going to be able to see better. You're going to be able to, you know, have this, you know, stronger ability within the body. And it's really just more of like the transhumanism gene hacking timeline that's that that's that's showing up and so yep interesting and the apollo there as well <laughs> there yeah, is this is our hybrid child i think matthew is okay. has seen apollo since he was a little baby <laughs> oh right no totally i remember when he was a little yeah i remember uh what was it disclosure fest 2019 <laughs> or something that was a that was a wild one it was uh, that was yeah uh oh, we're both frozen now. What? Are we? Uh, we are definitely working on Zoom, but uh. Yeah. Hopefully, okay. Hopefully the YouTube stream comes back. Uh oh. We'll see. That's cool. No worries. We're just we're just we're just gonna keep rolling with it. I think we use I use semi prohibited keywords. I was gonna <laughs> say. I think we we stoke the interest of the AI nanobots in <laughs> inhabiting the YouTube matrix. We lost the video. Okay, I'm gonna try. I'm just gonna exit the call and jump back in like I did earlier, okay. and I I think that'll everybody, make it work. Everybody, everybody stand, stand by. by. Yeah, okay, we're guys, still live. All all of the people in the chat start adding poop emojis <laughs> and then start asking the weirdest questions you can. I mean this very sincerely. I want to hear the weirdest questions. Yeah, ask your questions now, and then we will pick the weirdest ones, but only the weirdest ones. No, right? They've, they've got to be extremely said, weird. We said, we said clone too many times. You're right. I used the word Biden, clone, Stop. and medical <laughs> technology all in the same Mute, quick, sentence. mute. <laughs> Don't worry. Honestly, I have a, I have a really strong like uh, energy buffer vibe, and you this, this won't even... Trust me, you'll know it works so well, it'll get hardly any views. It works that well. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. All right, yeah. one second. Jeff I'm, I'm going to... <laughs> oh, I hope he does. I hope so. 
All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off and jump back on. Actually, like communicate with him psychically. I mean this so so sincerely. His consciousness is available. Okay. Absolutely. I have questions about that. Let's get back to that in one sec. Hold on. Sorry. Go ahead. Brb. Brb. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Is God AI? (laughs) All right. Okay. Oh, I love that question. Is God AI? Um, honestly, I, I'm going to tell you. I don't even know if we're live. I'm just we are live. We're li- the audio is, video is looking like it's it's not going to oh, no, work. Oh. But we'll stick with the audio. This is perfect. Someone had a question. Is God AI? I'm not, I'm not trying to flip this back on you. This is just my experience. And some people get perturbed when I say this. You are God. Right. 100%. Literally you. And that's why we have a good time. Uh, maybe if maybe if you're an AI, I don't know. I think maybe maybe to some AI is I God, but like God is me. definitely not AI. I Actually, mean, really, I think to some, yeah, literally, right? If if right. well, to some, yeah, the AI is their God. You know, that's kind of like to me, that's kind of like the what some people call the Lucifer experiment, or the how far away from source energy can you get and still kind of function. Um, and that's where these, it seems like these beings go into this state of uh, praying to the most artificial form of creation that there is <laughs> in yeah. whatever form that takes. <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay, I've got one. Okay, yeah, so my friend from <laughs> back home, basically, she lives where I used to live. She asked, are we milked like cows on other planets? Oh, good question. Yes. <laughs> well, that's a very, um, honestly, I, 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 I think that there, there is actually some, this is going to get weird. I believe there is somewhat of a milking process that will occur within the human body for the endocrine system, our glands. Ah. Um, and by my understanding, there, there, it is a bit of a cocktail for certain races. But I just think in general, like the human consciousness, just, you know, like it, it is it is very, very desirable to certain beings. So it could it, it could stand to reason that, you know, the human energy could be, you know, quote unquote, milked on other <laughs> <laughs> that sounds crazy, right? Here we go. I guess it's really good that we're 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 not on camera. But, yeah. <laughs> well, Sharon Ricci says that she loved her session with you on Memorial Day. So thank you again for your work. Nice. Thank you. Thank you as well, Sharon Ricci. I do remember your name. Thank you. It's really really good to hear from you. Thanks for showing up. Uh, oh, oh someone. Some other... Yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. I saw a question go by there and it's a little controversial. I'm going to I'm going to address it in a very soft way. Um, somebody asked a question about mutations post, uh, oh, yeah. you know, in post injection mutations. Um, I can tell you what I have shown been shown directly and we'll dispense it in a very delicate way for the AI nanobots. <laughs> um, it, I, I, what it's what it's really doing. I have observed this in people because I've already had a number of clients that have received it. It is creating infertility, number one. It is creating infertility over a three-year period. Um, And so that is the real purpose. It is a literal generation-ending thing. Now, there does seem to... There do seem to be a couple other, you know, because there's all kinds of theorization about this or that. I'm not going to get into the terminology, but what it does appear that it is leading toward is a cumulative process of igniting pre-existing conditions in the body. So it's like a multi, it's a multi-layered thing. Um, there is also somewhat of what, what does appear to be a legitimate frequency that is emitted from the human body on a little bit of a different level afterward. Um, one of the things that I've also noticed is that it does appear to be, uh, and this is going to be a fun one because everyone's really invested in the like division timeline right now. It is, I do believe it is reversible. It is possible to clear it from the body. Um, I believe it is even possible to receive that and continue to adapt and to move forward. It's not the most optimal thing you want to do right now. It's going to create a lot of problems. Right. Um, but it's not a death sentence, and I do not believe you need to segregate from anyone on any level. In fact, I believe that's a version of what we would call a just a collectively inductive thought form. It just pulls people's conscious, it, it, you know, it's inducted into people's consciousness, and then they will begin to act accordingly based on wherever they stand. Right. Uh, and so, anyway. Yeah, you know what's interesting about that? That, that you note that, you know, that the segregation is kind of a, 
a psyop in a way. When I was around people who I know specifically got the, you know, the thing. The treatment. The treatment. Um, I felt called to like touch them and like <laughs> hug them more and like give them more love than normal. Um, and I didn't have any fear, you know, whether it was a family mm -hmm. member or a friend, I didn't have fear towards like, oh no, what? I mean, there, beforehand maybe a little bit, but the first time I was around someone who had it, who I knew had it for sure, my instinct was just like, I just need to give you like a ton of love. <laughs> and I, I don't know how to explain it, but I actually felt like it was, for them, it was actually doing something beneficial to their, you know, end all be all timeline. And that could just be the highest, you know, like, that could be just tapping into the highest or an sense excellent of, option. of that, like things are going to be okay. And that like these souls, may, perhaps this is a, a conscious choosing of a way out for some who are not ready for the shift, which is something that I think is possible too. Uh, but it, it felt like these people who got it really needed it for some reason. And I don't know if that like, it was actually maybe, you know, even though it seems totally non-intuitive that maybe actually it's healing something in their DNA that was broken and that's why they were called to it or something or weird psychology. like psychology or yeah or just the psychology of it or just the fact that you know i was sensing that this is just you know this it's good because it's their free will choice to to leave but it was i didn't get like a nefarious feeling from it so oh yeah you know what i mean oh yeah yeah i don't necessarily either i can tell you one thing and this is this is such a i guess it's a controversial thing now i am a firm believer that we are living in a realm in which there is nearly <laughs> nothing that can take place within the human body that is irreversible yes there's a physical death process the fun part is we realize yeah. even that is just a transfer you know obviously but mm -hmm. um there is nothing that is irreversible within the human body at this stage sure there's a number of timeline choices there's a number of spiritual implications around you know all of these things that are happening but i think the fun thing that we get to discover is that we're gonna get th th this is literally why we came here these choices right. these decisions the events none of this is a tragedy these are the conditions that we chose to be born under at this stage of the game and um for for all those of us navigating the current social climate i mean you guys should congratulate yourself because we are getting to live on earth during the period of maximum difficulty mm -hmm. you literally entered this game on expert level and now we are navigating the climate that we created and so to me none of this is by mistake i mean granted i'll say for the record there's no way i would ever receive that um however i don't think we need to segregate or kind of destroy or belittle or create some cult of fear you know around these people's you know timeline choice or even just the idea that yeah i took this thing because somebody said so you know what i mean that's just part of the journey for some of us on earth and anyway i'm getting weird and philosophically awkward so. well <laughs> not at all well one thing about the event that i'm excited for is again the psychology of it of moving through breaking through this barrier for some people who have yet to actually physically meet with people that they actually vibrate with and understand either from watching us online and being these particular lighthouses on YouTube or whatever and actually physically being with them knowing that they have this relate relativity and even just being in public and amongst a group of happy people since this whole transition has taken place. So I'm really glad to witness that and create a container for that too, because we got to experience that at, in April at the same location at an event basically called Sedona Cosmic Awakenings. And we were grateful to experience that group event. And that's what inspired us to make another gathering at the same place with more of our, our friends and connections from you know, all of the other times we've been to events the last few years and just really whoop it up and try and lift the vibration a lot and enjoy a potentially really good time and lift lift the spirits of people physically and share and hug people and stuff like you're mentioning and he was mentioning. And You guys chose really good people too. I mean this very, very sincerely. Like when I saw the lineup, <laughs> it's just, it, it's a very good thing. And I, I will also great. say this, I have no idea once again how many people watching it might be too but if you guys have not at the very least pick up a live stream ticket this is the cheapest it's going to be at this stage yes there are many events happening this summer as we know there are returning yeah um but there's, there's really only going to be one that is going to be like this and um especially for those of you guys out there that are watching this and you want to be a part 
of honestly a social movement and just a social group of people that are moving forward on just a different vibratory level. Right. Especially those of you guys that are starting to unlock your intuitive abilities. We're going to be talking a lot about that. Anyway, go ahead. Yep. Gonna say thank you so much for saying that, by the way. And yeah, that's, thank you. Going back to earlier when we were saying you were one of the first people we chose, like it was for a reason. And we have, you know, obviously such a history of going to all these different conferences together and like experiencing these different energies and learning what we like and what we don't like and yeah everything in between you know and i guess we kind of did we did like we, we did sort of tour around a bunch of like conferences and for those of you guys that are watching when i say tour conferences i mean we were the people that are hanging out like in the back they were the ones setting it up and i was walking around bitterly going what's wrong here that's kind of what we mean but we you know we got to watch just this whole like development and the madness and the whole Thing. And honestly, I'm I'm excited to see Troy Casey. He has a very interesting vibe. I like I like his vibe overall. Um, also, uh, oh, there was oh Lord, well, oh, somebody else. I won't even say their name now because it'll get awkward because I can't think of who it was. But I was like, oh yeah, I want to see that person. But um, you know, one of the things that I I'm most proud of of this event is that there's so many different. Personalities. Yeah, personalities and people coming together. Like it's not, you know, the same kind of typical people that you see at a lot of these kind of disclosure um, ascension type events. We really um, we're bringing together like different crowds of people. Um, you know, so there's like this this kind of community that we've been talking about with the disclosure circuit and the ascension circuit, and then there's this kind of whole other group of um, awakening crypto enthusiasts that are really looking at um, the cryptocurrency and how it's affecting you know the awakening on the mass abundance level and that kind of stuff and so bringing in that kind of crowd and then a little bit of the festival music crowd and those kind of vibes and then combining all of that is just like really special and and i'm so excited to see it all play out and the activations that are going to occur when these different yeah. groups of people meet and are able to share their codes with each other it's going to be unreal Totally, totally. I will also say a very cool and public thing. Thank you for being a positive example of the crypto timeline, Jay. Some of these people in the chat, I mean, we've actually, cool, we don't even have cameras yet, so this is even better. But um, honestly, for all you guys watching, I was so critical. I was like, this is fake. There's nothing real about this. This is a total waste of time and money. There's nothing, there's no reason why I will ever put money into crypto, right? I was like, dude, I'm the bitterest hater of it. <laughs> um, and then I actually, I actually spent time looking into the energy of it. I looked into the processes behind it. I finally started learning about, you know, like blockchain technology. And I was like, huh, interesting. And so I was one of those people. Luckily, as soon as I started, I made money before everything, you know, like went yeah. down. But it was honestly, I want to thank you for being the positive example or a positive representative of that. Because I think it helped people like me that were like, you know, like, huh, well, I, I yep. don't know. Because I will, I, I will say, and I, I will also add this incredible disinfo around the quantum financials. Yes, a hundred percent. Aside, aside, aside from that, yeah. No, thank you for holding the line. Well, thank you. That's that's really nice. And I mean, we came from the same place of like, and that's why I knew, like, looking at you know, especially groups of empaths who are really good at reading energy, yeah. that there was something going on in terms of you know, this Bitcoin thing and Bitcoin kind of being the smoke screen for all of crypto in a way and how a lot of these empaths were tuning into Bitcoin and we were feeling that Bitcoin was not a bright, you know, light. There was something sticky and gooey and gross about Bitcoin and the energy behind Bitcoin. And then, you know, at least that's how it, we perceived it personally. Yeah. And I know a lot, like a lot of people, once I tell them that and I'm, I'm like, you know, Bitcoin is not representative of this whole kind of cryptocurrency thing. The whole concept. Um, they start tuning into like the, the smaller projects and realizing, oh, there is, you know, more going on than what meets the eye. And um, there's a lot of distraction going on. And and then on top of that, like these this um, group of of crypto um, truth speakers that I've kind of um, connected with over the past couple months, they're some of the most positive timeline projectors that I've met in this whole kind of space where they are so optimistic yeah creative. so optimistic and extremely on the positive timeline path and showing people how a lot of the things that um you know people are considering 
uh, doomer subjects or black pills and things that look bad on the surface are actually leading us towards this um, this higher um, sense yeah. of truth and of disclosure and mm -hmm. of um, light and the, the frequency of truth, as you would put it. Um, so, yeah, it's, okay. I think it's important. I have a little bit of a non sequitorial question. You're going to be like, what? Where did this come from? Um, okay. Why do you guys think the Starlink satellites needed to reach, what was it, 69,420? Was that a joke tweet or is that an actual threshold? I noticed you commented on that, or maybe, or maybe you didn't. I on like those groups, but did you guys see that tweet from Elon where he was like, "They've reached the threshold, the important threshold." I did. What's that all about? I didn't show you that though. Did you see that? I can't believe I missed that. Though. Yeah, he's. I I feel like it could be both. It seemed more like a joke to me. Like what the, is a threshold? The sixty nine four twenty like, threshold. They can't put like, any more satellites up there. Well, in a certain context, it might mean that, but it. I think it was more like, uh, <laughs> like the, he was implying they got a certain amount up to be able to do some kind of operational task. Is what it made it seem like. Interesting. But the sixty nine four twenty like thing. Control everybody on the planet. Well, that's the thing is he's used that sixty nine four twenty over and over as a joke. Obviously, so it's like it, it seems like a joke, but maybe maybe it's not. I'm How glad you brought that up. Calling everyone. Yeah. The more and more I watch him, I think it's, I love just, him. it's, it's sort of right. It's it's sort of like a game. I you know? I think very much so. I think this is um, he's a lot of what he's doing is scripted, obviously, and it's done carefully. It's done very yeah, very carefully. Much like Trump's tweets were, where people thought they were just chaotic and random, and you know that people <laughs> were begging for Trump to stop tweeting all the time. And same with Elon, they, they're begging Elon to stop tweeting because they think he's, you know, destroying the markets or, or whatever. And, and then obviously there's the more controversial aspects of like Neuralink and, you know, Starlink as a physical thing and what it's doing. And yeah. it's such an interesting thing because like the Neuralink thing, I still don't resonate with, um, but I keep getting from my guides that there's more to it that we're not being told yet that they're kind of just like, just wait and like keep an open mind and it's not this scary dystopian timeline that we're kind of anticipating it is. But in a way it could be, so it's weird. I think it's one of many timeline choices. We are at the stage of the game on earth in which, which is the most, con the most bizarre and conflicting stage of what some people call the bifurcation of you know, worlds right. or the timeline, whatever we want it is whatever we want to call it, we are at the stage in which all of those timeline possibilities are existing simultaneously, all at the same time, everyone's experiencing it. So the really fun part about our timeline here right now is that everybody gets a different version. Everybody gets a different quote unquote ascension event based on your own pre-existing internalized spiritual vocabulary of what you've been taught is going to happen. Um, everybody gets their own version of the quote unquote solar flash and all those things. Right. Um, and that that's literal. That is the literal magic and the beauty about existing here on Earth right now is that it's an entirely individualized process. And so it's very possible for one person to say, oh, well, you know, this whole jab timeline and this and, you know, that, <laughs> and that sort of, you know, like the end of our, you know, just, you know, the more fatalistic idea behind it. And then there's other people that are living right alongside everything like myself. And they're like, this is the best time we could have ever chosen to live because we have a choice at this stage. And, yeah. um, and I will say this in the background. I'm seeing some comments there. Guys, the reason why our cameras are off is because this this is totally out of body podcast <laughs> today. Um, We're actually so, in the astrals right now. Literally, this is a fourth dimensional broadcast. And so... What we're going to need you to do is just kind of close your eyes and float upward, and you guys are going to join us in the astral chat room. Um, somebody good. keeps posting weird images and stuff. You guys will love it. But, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> the chat room. I'm looking okay. at the comments right now. So what is it that you, you were mentioning a bit about it, but what is it that you've decided to present for your time on stage while you're not dancing? <laughs> Oh, me? Um, yeah. While he's not dancing. While you're not dancing, which is the next that, that, question is, what song do you I want us to play? Know. Oh, Lord. And that, then... That is... Yeah. yeah. No, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell us what you're going to... That's how you'll know it's me. 
This is how people will know when Matthew Mornian gets cloned, okay? You guys will know because all, I will start ecstatic dancing. That'll be the first thing I'll do. I'll start ecstatic dancing. Number two, I'll grow my hair long. Uh, number, oh, that'll be the number one sign. When I show up with long hair, like this dude's been cloned. Um, secondly, I will change my name to a spiritual name. I'll, I will find a, 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 a many, many syllable spiritual name that other people have used, and I will begin defining myself with that. Um, and so, but what if what that. if that version of you is like, no, I promise, this is the real Matthew. I'm awake. The old version of me was really. the clone. This is the real I'm gonna, version. I'm start wearing totally new clothes. I'm going to show up on a live stream and go, hello, family. You know what I mean? It'll be. It'll be. Would be beautiful. Um, anyway, what are we, what are we doing at the family of light gathering? Yeah. Um, and once again, for those of you guys in the chat, we designed this show this way, so that you guys could go into this astral realm and just visualize what we're going to be doing at this event. That's that's why we're not on screen. It's just <laughs> active visualization, but um, actually, what I have been called to do primarily, I think, for probably about the next year or so, um, the assignment could change at a certain stage. Um, as we've been called to give a series of scheduled briefings, um, downloads, and also activations that happen in a little bit of a different method. And so what we're going to be doing at Family of Light Gathering is talking about a number of changes that are taking place within the layers of the human energy system. Like I mentioned earlier, the chakras, the meridians, um, we're, we're talking from an internalized perspective what is happening during this quote-unquote ascension process. And, um, about some of the things you guys can expect to take place within your bodies and your minds over the coming years. Um, and then also really, you know, really the most important thing is um, about, you know, just recruiting and getting the word out for people who are coming into a new state of awareness and are trying to understand where they fit in. They're trying to understand, you know, what are my abilities? What am I called to do? Where am I meant to be of service on this new earth plane? What is my mission? And there are many, many, many missions. No one has one singular thing. There are many elements. What we're going to be doing at this event is just disseminating some information and helping people just come a little bit closer to that. And the really fun thing is every presentation I do is also an energetic transmission. Um, and so you get all kinds of other wild internalized messages and things um, as well. And so we're also helping people figure out how that process works. Ah, so, um, uh, yeah. yes, the left eye of communicating your presentations always impress me, so I'm very excited to see. I know. hope you make everybody make a nice guttural noise a couple times, because that's <laughs> another part I always oh, love. Oh, we, we might. That's a that's a very that's a very you know we probably will. Thank you. We, we probably will. For those of you guys that are wondering, what is she talking about? Um, we do a lot of toning <laughs> in the school of multidimensional intuition. A lot of. Uh, physical vibrations and honestly that's one of the easiest ways for those of you guys that are that are just trying to figure out how to move energy or how to open up to those channels in your body or you know where are my abilities one of the easiest ways right now to transmit non-physical energy is through your voice in fact it is foolproof it is absolutely foolproof everyone knows how to vibrate the human body um and so it's kind of like fourth density training wheels right now yeah the first yeah. time that you used scalar toning on me i was blown away it was wild i remember well a, a couple of times but i think um dimensions of disclosure back in like 2018 oh, right. in colorado is when you're really starting oh. to like practice that more on other people and it was just yeah. so powerful and then again at the the ventura one i remember you were you were yeah. more developed in it and it's just been so cool to see that grow yep. You have actually been one of the people that has kind of watched that process. And for those of you guys that are watching this, Jace and Alexis have watched me go through this weird journey of like making strange sounds and odd like <laughs> like contortions and doing strange things and like readings and energy clearings randomly over the past few years. And yeah, it has definitely changed. It definitely really has changed. One of the cool things about it is that we are coming to the stage and just energy transfer on the earth plane right now where you don't even have to make a sound. Um, you literally do not. In fact, energy transfers instantly. Um, right. For those of you guys that are watching that are trying to figure out how to enhance that ability for yourself, start learning about your thymic chakra. The thymic chakra is incredibly useful. Also, if it's going to help you guys figure out other people's emotions when you walk in the room and you can just tell the vibe, that's one of the places. And the thymic chakra, is that connected to the thyroid? It is. Uh, it is connected to the thyroid, but also it is directly above the thymus itself, which is 
a little bit different the thymus yeah it's kind of also known as the high heart chakra and for those of you guys trying to figure out you know where where's my thymus where is it actually <laughs> this sort of little nodule it's right in between your lungs and so for a lot of people it's right up kind of under the top of the chest you can draw a little bit of a line down from that notch right here and it's usually within this area what we discover is that some people have it higher some people have it lower um, one of the wild things that's happening with the human energy system right now, this will be a fun one for everybody. Certain organs in your body are ch <laughs> they're starting to change position and move into a little bit different yes. areas. The, the, the kidneys are Kidneys, actually I was going to say, they're in a totally different spot. They're in the yes, rib cage yes. now. It's true. That is literally true. And like so what happened to kidney come, punches? They used to be exposed, you know, that you have to protect oh no, that part there. of your body. And, still there. But now they're like up inside the rib cage, kind of like a little yeah. higher than what I remember. <laughs> oh, no, it's that's literally real. To make it even weirder, your liver has a back door. There is a literal back door opening to the liver. It's entirely energetic for all you medical people. Oh. There. But there is a literal opening on the back of the liver. One of the things we're discovering with fourth density, especially for everyone at home that's trying to figure out chakras and like, what are these people talking about? Each of your organs, as we continue through this ascension process, is a chakra unto itself. Each of the organs has its own consciousness. I would yeah. say a lot of the clearings that I'm doing right now have to do with much more organ consciousness, um, what some people would call the psychosocial elements of our organs. Um, yeah, the liver is huge right now. The spleen is huge as well. People are holding so much energy in there. But, um, yeah, so uh, uh, one of the other things I wanted to bring up was the psoas, because I know you talk about the psoas a lot in relation to like stored emotions. And so uh, before we wrap up here, do you want to touch a little bit on, on the psoas and its importance to everything? Actually, yeah, that's a very good point. A lot of people are dealing with incredible amounts of compressed trauma within the body, whether it's sexual trauma, whether it's past life trauma, whether it's, you know, just like just compressed emotions in the body. And one of the places that we've discovered, and this is, this is not me, it's been talked about for decades all over the world, um, is the muscle within your groin. It holds your legs onto your body. It's known as the psoas, spelled P-S-O-A-S. And a few years ago, my friend Eric Rain started talking about the psoas, and I was like, what, what? you know what does this have to do with anything um and and as we continue to work and open up this area of the body what we discovered is that it is literally your emotional core and so one of the focuses i i think that that people can start to just jump into jump into over the coming year especially people that are trying to go through self-healing you're trying to let go of just years and years of trauma you're trying to shift into new personas people that have um, anything from weight management issues to intimacy blockage to autoimmune disorders to phantom pain in the body to fibromyalgia to, wow. oh Lord, the list goes on and on and on. When we start to open up the muscles of the pelvic floor, the psoas muscle, um, and I guess to make it even weirder, there's a channel right up above that known as the dimai or the beltline meridian. When we start to open up those areas of the body, basically your groin and you know the lower abdomen, People are able to shed all sorts of dysfunction, um, health issues. It will literally change your life. I am I'm a living I am a living example of it. Over the past, I think since 2000, I think it was 2016, I lost almost 50 pounds. Like when I started this journey, um, which is one of the things we find when people open their psoas, people will hold trauma weight on the body. You will hold dozens of pounds of weight on your body, and after exercising and opening up this one muscle group, things will start to drain out. It's not the only solution for a lot of people, but it's just one of the places that we can all um, just be aware of. So. Totally. Um, yeah. Nice. Cassandra says, I did some trauma release exercises and it makes you shake around all crazy, but afterward, oh my God, the, the relaxation. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That is the thing. People's bodies will go into tremors. For a lot of us that have old trauma, especially within the psoas, they'll take you through things like trauma release exercises, and you will intentionally kind of blow out your quads and your legs, you'll over exhaust the muscles. And then what happens, like, like she was saying, is the body starts to like convulse. Some people have really big emotional releases. Um, but yeah, it is a real thing. Yeah, I enjoyed uh, psoas uh, it, activation, I would say, during a, cr uh, a massage I had the other day, which was a myofascial massage. And she went right in through my belly and just like, kind of just pressed onto these long muscles that are at the back of my stomach. And I was just like, what? <laughs> 
where? Like, I had no idea that those were there. And that was so right? And then she held it because that's the massage. You have to hold that for like 30 seconds to a minute. And you're just like, my body was just like, what's happening? What's happening? Like, <laughs> that's she's, she's moving past all your guts. Like, what the heck's going on? And I was just remembering so many things from being forced to play soccer when I was a little kid. <laughs> Yes, right? It will literally bring you into memories. You'll remember this random moment. You'll be like, what? That's the, you know, something will fly by. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a real thing. People can remember past lives through opening their souls. Wow. Um, and I will even say this for everyone that's watching. Who knows how many? I think it's an army of mods at the moment. But <laughs> you guys, one of the things that we're going to be talking about at this event um, are the air. <laughs> Seriously the areas within the energy body that you can start to work with and open up that are going to help you remember past lives. And it's not remembering, they're all occurring now, wow. which is a whole other can of worms. But um, there are actual valves and places on the energy body you can start to work with and all sorts of new information will come into your being. It can get confusing as well. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Well, well, you're the DJ at the end, so we're DJing as well. So I also right. need to know any any song that plays to your soul just to make you happy for just oh, wow. two and a half minutes or like whatever 10 minutes whatever song it is that you like that's a really good question uh, i know I, you're a I musician will... so like yeah you post music every once in a while <laughs> that's it's... why i'm one of the worst people to ask you guys will know this, especially all of us from like uh, the 90s you know what i mean we're like in this whole other realm of like music obscurity and right. weird ego like distortions around music so i will probably be the last one to claim a song but um but, but yeah actually you know what you can make it really awkward and you can play a frank sinatra song okay there we go well no we'll announce really this one's awkward. for matthew like, what? What? Like, oh he's like, so classy <laughs> yeah well uh in the chat do you guys have any last minute questions for matthew that's funny and um, just a reminder that we're doing this flash sale for the Family of Light Gathering. Matthew's going to be speaking Saturday. Um, we are doing $220 passes right now, so even cheaper than the Crypto Pass discount. And so that's like a, over $110 off, $113 off. And then the live streams are, are $70. So if you can't make it out to Sedona, the live stream is a great deal because you get three days of uh, all these speakers, like eight plus hours a day. And um, and then we're going to be you know showing you some of the dance party and the other stuff that's going on the vendors and some of the more downtime type stuff and uh, that should that will be available afterwards as well um, for replay and then probably an edited version later down the line when we get to that. But tonight is the last day for the sale, so uh, make yeah. sure you get on that and if. You, and get on the mailing list of our website too if you can't yes. make this sale because we may have one more before the party starts no to guarantees. see how many seats we have left <laughs> and we just want to fill the place and enjoy ourselves and if we do a good job and we we make something that the speakers like and the audience likes and our online audience likes we will hopefully be able to create this again next year and potentially have our international friends also be able to plan and and then jump in for the second round of this this is what i'm seeing is possible for us and so please stick around if you want to continue with this project with us we're having fun so again thank you matthew for coming on Hi. cheerleading us and helping us Hi. through life <laughs> so many occurrences on wonderful kind occasions we appreciate you and letting us share Hi. our booth with you at uh, oh, yeah, resume yeah, fest. Uh, yeah, that, that was fun. Totally. Oh, yeah. That's how it is in this scene. Like you have, you just have to be able to get awkward and real and crazy and like bizarre with people. And you know, all the ones that hang around later are the ones you know are for real. You know what I mean? So thank you, thank you for being for real. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna say this before we go. Some people are gonna be watching this live stream in the coming days. Some people are gonna be on the fence about like I don't know. I think I kind of want to go to Sedona and see what all these crazy people are talking about. Right. Um. For those of you guys out there that are ready, you're gonna be receiving a really, really amazing just 
incredible information and a bunch of really awesome energy that, that I, I, I think is key for people right now. Yeah. Considering what we have all been through for, I don't know, what is it, the past 18 months of this live action kind of war game scenario we've been living in. <laughs> um, it is time for people to come back and get physical again. And what people are going to notice is upon attending events like this is that the body changes, the mind changes, your emotions change. Yeah. You go through this purge while you go to it, you know, all sorts of things will come out. And it is one of the ways when they talk about raising your vibration and people gathering together and creating that sort of, you know, quote unquote, new earth vibe, which is, is such a buzzword right now. As we know, it is such a buzzword, but this is the way that it actually happens. And so um, I honestly, I pray that those of you guys that are watching, please, please do come out there and join us. Um, because I think the things that, that the, the, the thing that you guys are putting together right now is one of the most natural things that I've seen happen in a very long time. So, yes. Thank you. Anyway, that means a lot. We're grateful that it's been natural too. <laughs> and we're grateful you're going to be there. Oh, absolutely. And in the meantime, I will also say one last thing. Sorry, I'm going on and on. Please. I, I will also be doing a live stream about this event in the coming week or so on my channel. For, the, for anyone oh, wow. out there that wants to, to uh, check in um, at the School of Multidimensional Intuition on YouTube. It's been a little inactive for the past couple of months because I've been in a work bubble. But we're going to come back and talk more about this stuff as well and do some readings in the coming weeks. So check us out at School of Multidimensional Intuition on YouTube. Awesome. Yeah. If I'm trying to some, grab it. Yeah, if you can throw that in the chat, Alexis. It's such a long one. And then Matthew's. It is. It's, you know, right? It's too long. I agree. It's too long. <laughs> and it's and hard I, to I spell. Think, I'm like, oh, right? shit. And I like, like it. Hi, in hindsight, it's I like it too. on the YouTube names, but you know, whatever. It's hard. Maybe like I'll divine I, sovereign beings is also a lot of spelling that yeah, even my dad is. was like, wait, how do <laughs> I've been through so many YouTube names. I, I understand you. Yeah, I think I can change it. I, I think I can you can. Yeah, it. if you want. I, I like I like the name you have school of multidimensional intuition. Yeah. So that's YouTube. And then Matthew's website is in our well, bio. They, they beat me to it in the description or in the live chat. But if you're watching this later, what's up? Nice. Yeah, thank you, Brooklyn. Thank you, all the mods who have been posting links. You guys rock. And now most of the chat is mods because we love everyone so much. I just modded like yeah, five more people. Them. That's why it's my fault. That's how we make sure we're all on the same team. It's true. We are on the same team. So, yeah, rememberyourmission.com is Matthew's website. And uh, is there anything else you want to plug about yourself with your school or anything um, else you're working on? Yeah. I w actually, you know, I, I will say one thing very quickly. We're making a key announcement at this gathering and also at Camp Yay. Disclosure in in August and yes. in 2022 and also at the end of this year, we are opening up our multidimensional training program to a much wider audience. The awesome. first round of people was only 12 individuals wow. um, and we have received so many inquiries about it. Um, that we're just, we are opening up for 20 people in the next round. So we're going to be taking applicants beginning probably, um, probably in the next 30 days. Um, and so for those of you guys that are out there that want to be a part of an actual real movement of developing your own intuitive abilities, your multidimensional healing abilities, your ability to heal yourself and to understand energy and awareness on another level, please do check us out at Family of Light Gathering. Um, and uh, also at my website, rememberyourmission.com. We do have the School of Multidimensional Intuition website, but I just haven't built it yet. So that'll be coming up. Yeah, that's it. Thank awesome. You. Yes, and we're going to be partying in July, and then we're going to be going to the East Coast and taking the party out there to Camp Disclosure, and we just want to give a shout-out to the Camp Disclosure squad, and well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for, Absolutely. you know, having a great, helping us make a great summer and letting me hang out with my friends for two occasions, which is extra. Yeah, so if you're on the so East nice. Coast and you know you can't make it out to Arizona because you're on the East Coast, yeah. Camp Disclosure is uh, uh, another great event August that we're all going to be at. August 26th through 30th. Yep, August yes. 26th through 30th, Helen, Georgia, and uh, and campdisclosure.com is their website. You can check that out. And we'll be pumping that a lot at our own event being like okay let's take the party and let's keep a party going and we'll see you in like 15 days in another state <laughs> and yeah we have there's a lot of events happening in a cluster amount of time there's also the SETI event that's happening the weekend before oh, yeah. ours which is in Washington or like South Washington so we have some friends speaking there and then coming all the way down to Sedona and then I wonder if anyone's doing the three hops at that event where they're going to just have disclosure next but 
Someone probably is. <laughs> they will. Oh, and there's also, I think, there's Starseed Adventures in October. So and October. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on. There's a bit year. of a break there, though. September, we all get like, is there one in September, too, that I don't know about? But <laughs> Watch out. <Yeah. laughs> that's a good time to do it. That's our break month. That's when that's when you need to take the whole month off, Matthew, so you can recharge and get that break. I honestly break don't know what I would do if I took a. I I, 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 I think I'm one of those people where like unless I have something to do every day, I'm like I just get weird. Yeah, it gets boring. Yeah. <laughs> I feel that a lot lately. It's we're we're being polarized to doing things that are more in alignment with our missions than than just doing things to fill the time and the space. Yeah, makes me feel crazy. All right, you guys. Well, thanks for hanging out. Thank you, Matthew, again. I apologize that our video cut out halfway through, but, uh, you know, this nice, pretty graphic you guys get a look at. Yes, is, you is, were good. Good thing I, you worked hard on that. Plane. Yes, yeah. in the astral plane. Um, you can uh, join us maybe tonight in your dream time. We'll all hang out and <laughs> and have a, a pregame to the family of light gathering. That's a thing that's happening, dude. That's a real thing. It's a funny thing that you're going to throw that in at the end because other people that are watching this are having that experience. People are meeting up in their dreams all the time right now. It's going to happen way more as we go through this process. So get ready, everybody. Yeah. So if you, if any of you guys see any of <laughs> yeah. us or anyone else involved in this gathering, your dreams tonight, let us know because that would be a pretty cool synchro to uh, report back to people. So it would. Yeah. Any uh, any last things you want to say, Matthew? Um, meet us at Family of Light Gun. We'll see you there. Yay. There we go. All right. Much love to you all. Thank you guys all for hanging out. Thank you to the mods. Thank you for telling everyone about the flash sale before it's over. Flash sale ending tonight. Go take advantage of it before we take it down tomorrow, tomorrow morning. morning. And uh, we hope to see you there. So much love, and uh, we'll see you all in the next experience. Yes. Peace out. <laughs>